Developers can create custom tabs for Microsoft Teams that display user information using Microsoft Graph. Because users sign into Microsoft Teams via their Azure Active Directory accounts in Microsoft 365, developers can take advantage of this by implementing single sign-on to authorize the tab. If a user consents to use your app, they don't have to consent again on another device as they're already signed in automatically. And also, your access token is prefetched to improve the performance load time. Now keep in mind that while I'm just focusing here on tabs, um, it, all of this also applies to implementing SSO for Microsoft Teams task modules uh, that embed web content as well. So specifically in this, in this unit, we're gonna learn how SSO works and how to create a Microsoft Teams tab that uses SSO. So we're gonna understand the SSO authentication flow, configure the Azure AD application for SSO to be used in a Microsoft Teams tab, and then implementing SSO in Microsoft Teams tabs. Let's look at how the SSO process works at runtime with Microsoft Teams tabs. Now, Microsoft Teams app can use single sign-on uh, to call Microsoft Graph. Tabs are first gonna trigger the Microsoft Teams client to obtain the bootstrap token, or otherwise known as the ID token, and it's gonna do that using the get auth method to the Microsoft Teams JavaScript SDK. Once you get that bootstrap token, you can exchange it with Azure AD for an access token used to call Microsoft Graph. Now let's take a look at a little more detail at how the SSO process works at runtime. The first step in the tab, a JavaScript call is made to the get auth token method. And this tells Microsoft Teams to obtain an authentication token for the tab application. And step two, if this is the first time that a current user has used your application, the user is prompted to, be, to consent if consent is required or to handle the step-up authentication process, such as if your account has multi-factor or two-factor authentication enabled. In step three, Microsoft Teams requests the tab application token from Azure AD uh, for the current user. And then in step four, Azure AD is gonna send the tab application, the token, to the Microsoft Teams application. Keep in mind, this is the ID token or otherwise known as the bootstrap token. In step five, Microsoft Teams sends the tab application, the token to the tab as part of the re result object return by the get off token call. And in step six, the token is parsed in the tab application using, Java, using JavaScript to extract the required information such as the user's email address. And then from here, they can step up the authentication uh, and use this ID token to obtain an access token from, Microsoft, from Azure AD for Microsoft Graph. Now in the steps that I just outlined, they state that Microsoft Teams can prompt the user to consent the app permission and sign them in. But it's worth noting that Microsoft Teams can only prompt for consent for the OpenID profile scope. Microsoft Teams can't prompt the user to consent to any of the Microsoft Graph permissions. This can introduce a challenge with your app because it can't know if this initial bootstrap token can be used in the OAuth 2 on behalf of Flow to obtain an access token in order to call Microsoft Graph. If your code needs permissions to Microsoft Graph or permissions that the user has yet to consent to, when, the, when Microsoft Teams receives the bootstrap token, it's gonna fail with a specific error code, AADSTS65001. This error code indicates consent to the requested Microsoft Graph permissions has not yet been granted. In this scenario, your app should gracefully fail and handle this scenario with a fallback authentic authorization system that prompts the user to consent to the necessary Microsoft Graph permissions. All Microsoft Teams app that implement SSO must also have an associated Azure AD app registered. The Azure AD app used for the tab SSO shares many of the characteristics when used for a bot as SSO. Uh, for example, all Azure AD apps used with Microsoft Teams SSO must have the following. They must have a client ID and client secret or certificate that are used by your app to authenticate with Azure AD. They must have a list of API permissions that the app needs the user to consent to, such as user.read or mail.read. And they must obtain tokens with the OAuth 2 implicit flow. Microsoft Teams must be able to obtain the access tokens and ID tokens. And then they also must have the access as user permission. This permission is exposed by the app's registration and is used to grant apps, such as Microsoft Teams, to act on the user's behalf. And then finally, the, you must pre-authorize Microsoft Teams clients to act on the user's behalf. And this removes the requirement for users to explicitly consent to allow Microsoft Teams to act on their behalf. All of these characteristics of an Azure AD app registration are shared requirements when you implement SSO for either Microsoft Teams tabs, 
or bots. Microsoft Teams tabs have some unique characteristics because their web hosted interactive experience is com compared to the server side nature of bots. For example, the redirect URI for an app should point to the URL where the tab implementation is going to be hosted. Also, when exposing API, the API permission access as user, the app ID URI should include the domain where the tab is hosted as well. And you'll see where a bot works a little bit differently. Now let's look at the code and how you can implement a tab that uses SSO. First, you must associate the Azure AD uh, app with the Microsoft Teams uh, app. And this is done in the manifest JSON file uh, in the web application info object that we saw previously uh, in the videos. There are two parts of this section that must be updated for your app. The ID is the client ID for the registered Azure AD application. And the resource is the URL of the app, which is the same thing as the URI that was used when registering the app in Azure AD. The domain portion of the URI must also be listed in the valid domains array in the app's manifest. The next step for your tab to obtain the initial access token from Microsoft Teams is to obtain the ID token. Recall that this is commonly referred to as the bootstrap token because it only contains details used to identify the currently signed in user. It won't contain any permissions that can be used to call Microsoft Graph. To obtain this ID token, you're going to use the Microsoft Teams JavaScript SDK, specifically the authentication object to call get auth token, as you see here on the slide. The result object passed to the success callback method contains the ID token returned by Azure AD. This token can be used to identify the user within your tab or your own backend system. And if you use the access, if you use the ID token in your own API, you should implement the accepted best practices when forwarding the token that's received from Microsoft Teams. And this includes validating the token to ensure it was created by Azure AD. It's from the expected authority, the app is in the intended audience of the token, and the token hasn't expired, as well as the scope is set to access as user. Now, when you want to submit requests to Microsoft Graph for your tab, you need to obtain an access token from Azure AD to include in your request to Microsoft Graph. The Microsoft Graph access token is obtained from Azure AD, and you do this by exchanging the initial ID token that Microsoft Teams received from Azure AD. This access token, obtained using the OAuth2 on behalf of Flow, must be done server-side, and therefore, your tab implementation must provide some sort of an API to receive the ID token and submit the request to Azure AD for a valid Microsoft Graph access token. The OAuth2 on behalf of Flow requirements are as follows. You're gonna set the grant type to this long string that starts with URN colon IETF colon params, et cetera. The assertion is the ID token that you got from Microsoft Team. The request token use is set to on behalf of, and the scope is a space delimited list of all the permissions your app needs to call Microsoft Graph. You're gonna also use the registered Azure AD app's client ID and client secret to authenticate the service with Azure AD. This request is sent to Azure AD's uh, token endpoint, and the tenant ID can be retrieved from the TID claim that's included in the ID token received by Microsoft Teams. Azure AD will respond with a valid access token if the user has consented to the requested permission. If the user needs to consent to more permissions, or if the user must perform another authentication steps required by their tenant, such as multi-factor authentication, Azure AD is going to respond to this request with either an invalid grant or an interaction required error. And in these cases, you should prompt the user to consent to Microsoft Graph within your tab. 